Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The disgusting evil of Thomas Seymour, the abuser of Elizabeth I. There are many people that throughout the Tudor period were associated with execution, scandal and shocking behaviour. But one of the most despicable and disgraceful men of Henry VIII's court, and later Edward VI's advisory council, was Thomas Seymour. The first Baron Seymour of Sudley was a jealous and vindictive man who wished greatly to become one of the most powerful men in the country. Many would fight for power inside, especially the boy King Edward VI court, but few would go to the lengths that Thomas Seymour did. He's a man linked to the abuse and inappropriate treatment of Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, and he was later executed for a huge number of accusations of treason. But what did he do which was so evil? Born into the rather powerful Seymour family, he was the brother of the third wife of King Henry VIII, Jane Seymour. Jane would provide the infamous Tudor king with everything he wanted in a male heir and a son. But with this, Thomas Seymour, along with his brother Edward, became uncles to the heir to the throne. Thomas was in the royal court, and despite Jane's death from complications arising from childbirth, he continued to remain close with King Henry VIII. He was sent to the embassy at the French court and was tasked with meeting Anne of Cleves, the king's failed fourth wife. And following this, he was dispatched to the Hungarian royal court to secure support for Henry VIII against the French and the Scottish. It's clear Henry viewed him as an important advisor and ambassador. And as war broke out between England and France, Thomas was made Marshal of the English Army in the Netherlands in the June of 1543 and was involved in capturing and destroying a number of castles. He was a skilled soldier and then was made Master General of the Ordnance and Lord Warden of the Clink Ports. He came back to court at the right time, just before the death of King Henry VIII in the January of 1547 and immediately he went to work trying to secure himself more power and influence. Henry VIII's successor was his nine-year-old orphan son, Edward VI, and his uncle Thomas saw himself as the perfect person to steer the king and to practically rule for him. But it was his brother Edward Seymour who was selected for this and was appointed the Lord Protector. Thomas was part of the Regency Council, established to rule until Edward was of age, but as Thomas saw his brother rise, his jealousy became increased. However, he secured further power by jumping in the marital bed of the deceased king and by becoming romantically involved with Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's sixth wife. Catherine and Thomas had gone back a long time and the pair became besotted with each other quickly and Catherine, very soon after the King's death, accepted Seymour's proposal of marriage. It was only four months since the King died, and Seymour knew that the Regency Council would not allow him to marry the Queen Dowager, and so, around May 1547, the pair married in secret. The King and Council were not informed of this initially, and their union resulted in a small scandal. The King and his sister Mary I were greatly upset by Catherine and Thomas's marriage, and many across England saw it as disgusting and were furious at the behaviour of Catherine, as they believed that Henry VIII was not even cold yet and she had married somebody else. Thomas was censored and angrily reprimanded by the Regency Council, and Mary I in particular was furious at his actions and was disgusted with this. She asked her half-sister Princess Elizabeth not to speak with Catherine anymore and Catherine also began to have problems with Edward Seymour, and a rivalry emerged between her and Edward, along with Thomas. But to many, Thomas Seymour's crime of marrying Queen Catherine Parr quickly after Henry VIII's death was incredibly unforgivable. Within weeks of the King's death, it was clear that Thomas and Catherine had been sleeping together. But following the marriage, Thomas moved in with his wife at her house in Chelsea Manor in London, she lived with her stepdaughter, the 14-year-old Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I. Thomas was the uncle of Elizabeth's half-brother and husband of her stepmother. But whilst living inside of the household of Elizabeth, Thomas began to act very inappropriately towards the young girl, and some claim that he abused her a number of times. 
Thomas Seymour was noted a number of times coming into the princess's rooms in the early morning, looking for her whilst he was wearing his night clothes, which was considered very scandalous. Cat Ashley, Elizabeth's governess, was disgusted at his behaviour and she reported it to Catherine Parr, who laughed it off. Also, on a number of occasions, Thomas inappropriately tickled and touched Elizabeth and slapped her on her behind as she was laying in bed. Cat Ashley accounts the events and stated Seymour would come many mornings into the Lady Elizabeth's chamber before she were ready and sometimes before she did rise and if she were up he would bid her good morrow and ask how she did and strike her upon the back or on the buttocks firmly and so go forth through his lodgings and sometimes go through to the maidens and play with them and so go forth. If Lady Elizabeth was in bed he would make as though he would come at her and she would go further into the bed so that he could not come at her. On one occasion, Cat saw Seymour try to kiss her while she was in bed, and the governess told him to go away for shame. Seymour became more bold and would come up every morning in his nightgown, bare-legged in his slippers. Now, Seymour angrily claimed that his behaviour meant no evil, and he refused to stop. To begin with, Catherine Parr joined in with this behaviour, and at one point even held Elizabeth down as Thomas Seymour tried to wrap his arms around the young girl. It was also said that the Queen Dowager took to coming with her husband on his morning visits, and one morning they both tickled the princess as she lay in her bed. In the garden one day, there was some startling horseplay in which Seymour indulged in a practice often heard of in police courts. The Queen Dowager held Elizabeth so that she could not run away, while Seymour cut her backcloth gown into a hundred pieces, the cowering under bedcloths. The struggling and running away culminated in a sense of classical nightmare that the helplessness and the power of a smiling ogre. The Queen Dowager, who was undergoing an uncomfortable pregnancy, could not bring herself to make her husband angry by protesting about his conduct, but she began to realise that he and Elizabeth were very often together. Some have even claimed that Thomas Seymour may have slept with the future Queen, casting huge issues as he was 25 years her senior, and she was just a teenage girl, and was later referred to as the Virgin Queen. Catherine was an enabler of the behaviour, and in one time it was said that Thomas cut Elizabeth's shirt to pieces, exposing parts of her body to those that were there. It's considered that Elizabeth may have shown some affection to Thomas, but her governess forced him out of her quarters a number of times and Thomas Seymour therefore found this a game. But when Catherine Parr became pregnant in the spring of 1548, she became more aware of her husband's flirtations with Elizabeth, and because of this, the princess was sent away. Elizabeth later wrote to Catherine saying, "'Although I could not be plentiful in giving thanks "'for the manifold kindness received at your highness, "'hands at my departure, Yet I am something to be born withal, for truly I was replete with sorrow to depart from your highness, especially leaving you undoubtful of health. And albeit I answered little, I weighed it more deeper when you said you would warn me of all evils that you should hear of me, for it was your grace had not good opinion of me, you would have not offered me friendship to make me that way that all men judge you the country. But what may I more say thank you God for providing such friends to me, desiring God to enrich me with their long life, and me grace to be in heart no less thankful to receive it, that I now am glad in writing to show it, and although I have plenty of matter, here I will stay for I know you are not quiet to read. But the biggest crime that Thomas Seymour committed that led to his execution was in regards to his behaviour with King Edward VI. He tried to win over the king's affections greatly, and even paid members of court to speak ill against his brother, the Lord Protector. He regularly visited Edward's bedchamber, and it was said that he showed no greater greed than the rest of the nobility round him. Seymour's real weakness was his morbid jealousy of his elder brother Somerset, whose military victories had first marked him out before his position as Protector raised him up. When his brother Edward discovered that Thomas was entering the boy's king bedchamber, presumably for favour he kept his own brother under a special watch to prevent Thomas's entry to the bedchamber. One night Thomas found the king's bedchamber bolted shut and he was furious. It was alleged, however, that one night whilst the king was at Hampton Court, he tried to break into the king's apartment. As he entered the privy garden, one of Edward VI's spaniels woke up and began to bark. 
and because of this he then shot and killed the dog. He scampered off and then the next day was outside of the king's bedroom with a loaded pistol. And many believe that he was attempting to either assassinate the king or kidnap him in a power plot against his brother. Thomas's enemies dug in their claws and he was therefore placed into the Tower of London under arrest. Also arrested in a possible plot was Cat Ashley, Princess Elizabeth's governess and Sir Thomas Parry, the head of Elizabeth's household. Information had come to the forefront of court that Thomas Seymour was also attempting to marry Princess Elizabeth following the death of Catherine Parr in a further power play. Princess Elizabeth also had to justify herself and distance herself from this, and she wrote, Master Tyrrett and others have told me that there goeth rumours abroad which be greatly bold against my honour and honesty, which, above all other things, I esteem, which be these, that I am in the tower, and with my child by Lord Admiral Thomas Seymour. My lord, these are shameful slanders for which, beside the great desire I have to see the King's Majesty, I shall most heartily desire your lordship that I may show myself there as I am. Elizabeth managed to escape any punishment, but the same could not be said about Thomas Seymour. Another one of his crimes was that he had tried to even raise a rebellion inside of the English navy against his brother, and as Thomas was Lord High Admiral, he had the men at his disposal to do this. He also tried to speak with pirates on the western coast to join the rebellion against his brother Edward and the King. He should have been defeating these, but he was conspiring with the enemy. But whilst inside the Tower of London, Thomas Seymour was met with a charge sheet that included a shocking 33 counts of treason. This included trying to kidnap the King, trying to assassinate the King, trying to raise a rebellion, and he was even accused of marrying the Queen Dowager too soon after the King's death. He was also accused of using gifts to lure Edward VI into a sense of grooming the young king. But one of the biggest charges related to trying to marry the Princess Elizabeth. He had also been found guilty of making arrangements to the young king to marry. The huge number of crimes against Thomas Seymour was staggering. Under pressure from his wife, Edward Seymour, his brother, would be the one to condemn him to death and signed his death warrant. He was executed on Tower Hill on the 20th of March 1549 in front of a huge crowd. Thomas Seymour is considered one of the greatest villains of the Tudor period. He was obsessed with power and he probably wanted to become king and through marrying Catherine Parr he got dangerously close to Princess Elizabeth. But Seymour eventually met his end at the executioner's axe and he was seen as a man of great treachery plotting and deceit, but he was mostly driven by the pure jealousy he had for his brother, the Lord Protector. But even his brother would meet his end on Tower Hill, being beheaded by an axeman. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.